Welcome back. As we talked about previously, the goal of a reinforcement learning algorithm is to maximize expected future rewards. To achieve that eventual long-term success, you have to first think in the short term. Which actions performed by an agent resulted in a good outcome? And do you want to incentivize or reinforce them in the future? On the flip side, which actions resulted in a bad outcome and should therefore be discouraged moving forward? In reinforcement learning, the reward function is where you, as the user, get to experiment with answering these questions and actually apply those answers to your model. The reward function in AWS DeepRacer is Python code. It includes a set of parameters that are passed into the function for which you can set rewards to encourage and discourage specific actions. Through the reward function, all of these parameters can have associated rewards to incentivize a particular action or behavior. Think about the parameter on track, for instance. In the reward function, you can implement a strategy to give some amount of rewards. Let's say one to the car if it stays on the track and penalize it minus one rewards for being off the track. Sounds pretty straightforward, right? If, if you could significantly improve your car's performance by strategically rewarding just one of these parameters, then yeah, things would be pretty straightforward and we probably wouldn't be teaching an entire course on AWS DeepRacer. But lots of different variables go into a car's performance around the track. So ultimately, the challenge is to define a reward function that covers many or even all of these important factors at once. Crafting an effective reward function requires a lot of experimentation. In just a moment, I'll walk you through some of the options I experimented with when defining and iterating on my reward function. But first, let's actually see what the reward function looks like and the templates you can use to get started. The first thing to note is that AWS DeepRacer offers you two different versions of the reward function to get started with. You've got basic and advanced. Now these are both templates you can use right off the shelf. The difference is the number of actions they're providing rewards for. The basic version is set up to just reward one specific type of action, whereas the advanced version rewards, and honestly punishes, two different types of actions. You'll see exactly what I mean in just a second. Let's start by looking at the basic function first. At the top, you see the reward function defined with all the parameters we just walked through being passed into the function. Here, there's an import of the Python library math, and now to the meat of this version of the function. As you may notice, this truly is a basic function in that it's only focusing on a strategy to incentivize the car staying close to the center of the track via the distance from center parameter. The part of this function is basically just an if statement that's giving a reward of one if the car's distance from track center is within 20% of the track width, a reward of 0.5 if it's within 50%, 0.1 within 80%, and 0 0.001 if the distance is greater than 80%, which at that point, you've probably crashed or at least off the track. That reward is then returned at the end of this function. Now, let's quickly take a look at the advanced version of this function, which in following the best practices I mentioned earlier, iterates on the basic version of the function by adding just one other parameter to incentivize. As you see, this template continues to reward the car for staying close to the center line, but also now adds a penalty for steering too much in order to prevent the car from turning away from the center line of the track. Now, obviously, these are just templates that you can use and expand on to experiment with your car's performance. And as I mentioned earlier, it really is an experiment, a true iterative process. 
One approach we suggest is to start with a simple reward function and then progressively enhance it to handle more actions every time until all the possible behaviors are considered. At each iteration, you can introduce one or more sophisticated treatments to the reward function to handle previously ignored variables, just like we saw as we went from the basic to the advanced version of the function. Now, I'm going to wrap up this section by walking you through an example of how I, as a relatively still new user, might start that iterative process. Let's fast forward a bit and pretend that I've already experimented with the basic function and I've just run the advanced function that both rewards following the center line and penalizes excessive steering. Now I want to evaluate my trained model that's using this particular reward function. You can do that in a couple ways, but the first thing I like to do is actually watch my car performing in real time. The way to do that is through the simulator. Now, this process can take a couple of hours, and I don't always have the time to just stand here and watch the car go around the track. But I do like to get a sense of what it seems to be doing, what it's doing well, and more importantly, what seems to not be doing so well. For instance, maybe I start to notice the car's orientation, that is, its heading, is a little wacky and is not lining up with the direction the car is actually moving. Maybe I need to incentivize a straighter car heading, since all that rotating by the car at its z-axis has to be slowing it down. So that's a hypothesis I might want to play with. But before we get too far ahead of ourselves, let's take a step back and discuss hyperparameters, what they are, and how you can tweak them for more effective model training. That's coming up next.